Jonah Dempsey here. I'm in London Heathrow Airport, and I'm just waiting for my flight to Ibiza for a return to the Magic Island. Wanted to talk for a minute about frustration as a generator versus matters of the spirit, we'll call it that. So recently a little crisis came up. I'm an open solar plexus, so crisis usually comes from 35, 36. There can also be surprising spikes, for instance, from 1222 or 3955. There can be the fates from 4130. Um, there can also be tribal breakdowns, 1949 or 3740, these kind of, uh, sorry, did I say 4130? Okay, anyway, so, you know, these are some of the emotional, I mean, even, you know, 59.6, that can be a huge breakdown. I guess there's seven ways you can have a huge emotional um, event happen, right? We call it a crisis if it's 35, 36, but really they're all crises. It's all a crisis of some form or another, right? Different forms of crisis. And it all has to do with intimacy and friction and his like 59-6 theme, which just kind of runs through everything. And even like the fundamental duality of 636. I know it's uh, Alokanand Diaz, who's done such great work on the polarities, who describes the 636 polarity as the fundamental difference between union six and leaving or separation 36 and so all the emotional stuff that comes up is kind of like can really trigger abandonment issues separation issues and also questions of union and questions of friction and all sorts of stuff but with the exception of 59.6 none of it really has much to do with frustration it can leave you bitter or it can leave you angry, <laughs> right? Only one of the seven channels is actually about frustration there. And so that's kind of what I've been thinking about because there was a, an emotional event that occurred over the past 24 hours. And I've had a number of these emotional events and yet it's not an event that led to any frustration on my part. It's an event that I've had to navigate um, just, you know, things come up. I'm not going to go into the details other than just to say triggering separation, triggering abandonment. Little things can trigger these things, you know. You can be working with someone and then they feel you pull away and that can trigger abandonment. I was in the midst of the HDHD conference and had some abandonment triggers on the Saturday night of the conference. They came up. So these things happen and I guess what I'm trying to say is it's not because I'm a generator that any time anything happens, I feel frustration. What makes me feel frustration? Resistance. When do I get resistance? When I'm pushing. When am I pushing? When I'm initiating. When I'm not responding to life. So that's what causes frustration, right? For me. Um, so yeah, where am I going with this? Just really just to say that Frustration is not the only keynote. It's, not, it's almost like, wow, Jonah, you had a really emotional experience. That must be really frustrating for you. It's like, no, actually, I'm at peace with it. Or, actually, I'm pretty angry about it. Or, actually, it was a success. We now recognize and see each other more clearly. Or, actually, it was disappointing. And, you know, I, I, I won't say that bitterness happens in the moment. Bitterness takes a long time to build up. Uh, bitterness is from a series of failures. <laughs> right over a long enough period of time that the failures just keep happening and then the bitterness sets in um, but you know I think that that's what that's what happens like when there's an emotional event you can either be at peace with it or be angry about it can't always choose right I'm not it's not like using my mind to override my natural feeling it's like no I, I'm just I feel angry about it right it's just it didn't go well or, you know, maybe it's a projected channel and it can either be success or failure. We always say success versus bitterness, but really it is success versus failure in some sense. But failure leads to bitterness after a long enough time. It's not like you feel bitter instantly. You might have a lot of bitterness from years and years and years built up and then it might trigger that bitterness and the bitterness comes out. But that bitterness has already been there, believe me. It's not like you get bitter overnight. So, 
you know, say it's a 1949 and you have a big split with somebody, that guillotine comes down, that 49 rejection. And what happens? Okay, well, um, that rejection of the 49 comes down. That can actually happen successfully in the sense that it can be clean or it can be really messy, not done in clarity, done impulsively. And it can lead to basically a failure. What kind of failure? A failure to understand, a failure to communicate, a failure to recognize. People can end up feeling really unseen and unrecognized. But, you know, these are the dynamics at work. So I guess, yeah, I think that I'm going to wrap it up for now. But I just wanted to say, you know, if you're thinking about emotional crisis and how it relates to frustration, it really doesn't. The only emotional channel that really does relate to frustration is 59.6. Now, that is a sort of archetypal channel that does have some element of its energy in all emotional interaction because emotional interaction does have to do with questions of union or not. And I do think that Alokhanand Diaz is very astute in his observation that the polarity between 6 and 36 is a sort of fundamental polarity between the fundamental purpose of the emotional generator and even just the generator themselves with their magnetic aura, which is union and the fundamental purpose of the emotional manifester and even just the manifester in general, generalizing it, which is in some ways separation. And these are two fundamental archetypal processes um, that occur. So that's it for me.